Modern Warfare 3 Season 3 is here today, and with it comes a host of new content, but more importantly to this video, a bunch of gameplay changes and balancing. We've already talked predominantly about the content upcoming from multiplayer weapons and maps to the new additions in Season 3 for Warzone with Rebirth Island and beyond, but today I want to take a look at everything that this update changed. So we won't be focusing as much on the content side of things, but we will be focusing more so on the gameplay changes. So as we go along, drop your thoughts down below. What do you think of these changes made to season three thus far? If you enjoy the video, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to the video with all things Modern Warfare 3, Warzone, season three coverage, and even more FPS content beyond here on the channel. I'd love to have you. Also, if you want to follow the short form content, make sure to follow over on TikTok, link down there in the description below. But anyways, let's jump into it. Firstly, let's start out with the Modern Warfare 3 side of things. We're going to start, honestly, with the weapon tuning, and for the sake of sparing you the monotony of listing off every individual value and change, on screen you'll see the changes with their denoted highlight of red as a nerf, green as a buff, yellow as a change, neutral really, and a quick mention of each of the things adjusted. We'll do this both for MP and Warzone tuning since it's a lot of values and specific info, but it slowed down the process quite a bit to read off every single item and specific value of what was changed. So let's jump into it. Firstly, the rifle category, we saw four weapons adjusted here, all of which being nerfs to these weapons. The Ram 7 saw a decrease to the neck multiplier. The Holger 5.56 saw a decrease to the upper leg, lower leg, and foot damage multipliers, requiring this now to land shots above the waist for a four-shot kill. The MCW actually saw a decrease to that headshot damage multiplier, which on paper seems kind of significant because headshots were already huge in making the MCW a very good weapon in all engagements. So nerfing the jack of all trades weapon is an interesting move for sure that takes that four shot with one headshot out of the equation. And then finally, the DG56 saw an increase to the sprint to fire time. Now, one big thing you'll notice with these patch notes in particular between Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone is the noted sprint to fire and ADS time, not speed. If it was speed, then you'd see an increase to the sprint to fire speed. That would be a buff, making it faster. However, if you increase that time, it's a nerf. It means it takes longer to end up getting into that fire position, the ability to fire after sprinting, and it takes longer to aim down sight. So just bear that in mind. That's going to be a key part here to a lot of these values that are tuned throughout all of these. But anyways, moving on to the battle rifles, the SOA subverter saw a nerf across the two values of sprint to fire time and ADS time. The Bass B saw both a decrease to the rate of fire and a decrease to the recoil center speed, but the Jack Outlaw kit saw a few additional nerfs in that sprint to fire time and ADS time, but it did decrease the aim down sight rate of fire penalty and increase the medium damage and minimum damage. So a little bit of a mixed bag here at that Jack Outlaw 277 kit. The Sidewinder saw a buff where it decreased the sprint to fire time and increased the bullet velocity kind of substantially on that. So they keep trying to make the Sidewinder work here. Maybe Maybe one day we'll see it actually be a viable choice, but for right now, we'll see where that leads us into Season 3. On paper, it's a nice buff, but whether or not that actually breaks it into being usable, well, we'll see. Anyways, the SMGs, the Ram 9, we saw a decrease to the sprint to fire time, a buff there. The AMR 9 saw the same thing, a buff. The Rival 9 saw a handful of nerfs where it increased the sprint to fire time, decreased the near to medium damage, medium damage, and lower torso, lower arm, and hand damage multipliers. The HRM 9, Striker 9, Striker, WSP 9, and WSP Swarm all had an increase that sprint to fire time. Again, a buff on that, making it a little slower to the draw. The only adjustments to the shotgun had added the long haul 50 and wolf call 300 muzzle attachments to Modern Warfare 3 shotguns. So that one I'd say is neutral. It's just a change, something that was added, but it doesn't affect anything in particular in terms of base weaponry. The LMGs, the TAC of Valvary saw nerfs where it increased the sprint to fire and aim down sight time, and also decreased the neck damage multiplier and decreased rate of fire for the 762 and 556 belt magazines. The Bruins saw a decrease the aim down sight time just making it a little bit snappier. The RAL MG from Modern Warfare 2 saw nerfs to the sprint to fire and aim down sight times, but increases and in buffs to the neck damage multiplier, upper torso damage multiplier, and leg and foot damage multipliers. Marksman rifles and sniper rifles basically got nerfs across the board. Nothing really positive here out of these ones. The MTZ interceptor saw decreases to a handful of those damage values, plus increased the aim down sight time, just making it slower overall. And then the snipers of the XRK Stalker, KV inhibitor, and SPX80 saw increases to that aim down 
down sight time while the SPX 80 ended up getting an increase to the sprint to fire time as well. The handguns of the tier and the WSP Singer saw a little bit of a buff, but those were more so attachment based. The snake shot ammunition getting an increase to the minimum damage range which is interesting. And the Akimbo WSP Stinger saw an increase to the rate of fire. Now, additional things in regards to Modern Warfare 3 outside of just those weapon tuning values, we actually saw a little bit in regards to gameplay changes for perks, equipment, and a couple of other things. At its base, one thing that you'll see not only just in Modern Warfare 3, but also carried over into Warzone, is some additional ADS idle sway adjustments here, allowing for more predictability in sway pattern. We saw Season 2 introduce a bunch of those changes here, but it's continuing and building on that, so it should be a bit more precise, a bit easier to control, and honestly just not as annoying if you're looking down your scope and just seeing that sway back and forth but one of the big things is that it decreased obstructive vfx while firing mw2 weapons to align with the mw3 standards that's what they say in the patch notes but in a call with some of the developers here basically that comes down to hey we're removing more of that muzzle flash so that's definitely nice here for whatever reason infinity war just had this affinity for insane muzzle flash that was just insanely intrusive into your gameplay experience you couldn't see anything really on some of those weapons so that's now been decreased to bring it more in line which is definitely cool we saw adjustments to the gloves of the quick grip gloves where swap speeds have been standardized and improved where possible the assault gloves now also improve weapon handling the ordnance gloves now also improve usage time for most equipment field upgrades and streaks the commando gloves now improve sprint out speed and tack sprint cancel reloads marksman gloves fixed an issue where the sway benefits were not working as intended running sneakers now also improve tactical sprint out stock boots now also improve walking smoothness the flash grenade its min and max and effect have been normalized as has the stun grenade the aim slow effect has now been heavily reduced in duration so definitely nice to see all that kind of stuff and then one other cool thing that is of note i think is a new party bonus xp where this allows players to earn more xp dependent on the party size they play with so if you play with friends this is great for you you can earn plus 25 percent rank and weapon xp rank for two players plus 25 rank weapon and battle pass xp for three players Players and four and up players, you get 30% of a boost on rank, weapon, and battle pass XP. So pretty cool there for sure. But anyways, let's keep moving on here. Zombies, before we bridge the gap into Warzone, well, nothing really until mid-season, as we've talked about. Now, Treyarch did mention in a call that I sat in on recently that they're really all hands on deck for something else upcoming. And we all know what that means. So the rest of the content here is falling to a different set of teams, just trying to really tie the experiences together to that next title. So fingers crossed, whatever Treyarch's cooking up for presumably Black Ops Golf War is an absolute banger, but for right now, it seems like Modern Warfare Zombies is going to be left by the wayside, or at least getting minimal content support here for probably the rest of the year, unfortunately. But anyways, Warzone, let's talk about this. A lot of stuff in regards to Rebirth Island, a lot of stuff in regards to weapon tuning and all, but starting out with Rebirth Island, just because I think there's some interesting and noteworthy things here right up front, we do have a few changes to Rebirth Island in terms of some additional buildings, some additional ways to help improve flow and movement around the map. But in the harbor area, you have a new small building by generators, water treatment added more cover and a bit more reason to land there, stronghold, there's a new garage building in the place of the bunker, some lines of sight were adjusted with the initial buildings and some soft cover was added into open areas giving you a bit more of ways to stay alive because in that stronghold area in particular if you're up on the cliffside you can look down on everybody and there's just really no cover there especially right at the bottom of that cliffside so that is something that was added here to mitigate that a little bit there's new tunnels that you can swim through two tunnels in the map over by harbor and water treatment they're very simple to follow and they're linear tunnels there's nothing really more to them other than just like a flank route that you have to swim through water treatment goes in into the golden bunkers which i thought was pretty cool repurposing that little area but anyways other changes the tents down by wardens is a bit more solid so you can't wall bang like three to four of them at a time there's new drop holes that you can end up going into the underbelly of the world a little easier and adding a bit more flank routes again there's that new water and shore play there's new zip lines and all things like that so that's cool and stuff we'll be able to experience here shortly the infill strikes the first two weeks of play there is no infill sequences so what you have is that base rebirth offering and nothing will change so bear that in mind and make sure you know that because the first two weeks are going to be totally normal they're going to be just how you remember them with those slight thematic reskins and maybe some slight alterations in regards to the different buildings and different cover added but for the most part 99 percent of rebirth island is going to be returning just as you remember it which is cool now that said let's talk about weapon 
tuning because there's a decent bit here still some of the stuff is one-to-one -one with modern warfare 3 but other stuff not so much starting out with the assault rifles here one thing you'll notice is that we see a bunch of different love for the modern warfare 2 weapons in this patch we see a lot of stuff nerfing the modern warfare 3 weapons and buffing some of the mw2 weapons so it seems like we're trying to find this common balance and ground between all of the weapon pull set which is pretty cool and if done properly can offer a ton of variance into that air quote meta but it is a tall task so we'll see how this works out in practical use rather than just on paper with what we see with these patch notes but anyways the ram 7 saw nerfs across the board with a max damage decrease near to mid and max damage range decreases as well as modifiers to the head and neck damage multipliers the dg50 saw an increase to that sprint to fire time again coming back to time not speed then you have a couple of weapons from modern warfare 2 buffed in the way of things here where the lockman 556 saw a buff to the max damage near to mid damage neck modifier upper torso modifier and arm and hand modifier so a substantial one on paper there again we'll have to see how it plays out in practical use the m13c saw a max damage range increase the fr advancer saw a buff to the arm and hand modifiers and the tempest razorback saw a max damage increase and arm and hand damage modifier battle rifles your bass b saw again a decrease across the board in regards to rate of fire and recoil center speed but that jack outlaw 277 kit also saw the changes we saw in modern warfare 3. the mtz 762 saw a max damage decrease and near to mid damage decrease while the soa subverter saw a max damage range near to mid damage range decrease along with the increase to the sprint to fire and aim down sight times the sidewinder though again for whatever reason trying to make this a viable weapon been increasing it ever so slightly every update it seems like we did see a buff to that sprint to fire and bullet velocity the smgs we saw a bunch of different stuff here that kind of does vary a little bit from the modern warfare 3 tuning but the ram 9 saw a max damage decrease but also a decrease to that sprint to fire time so a nerf and a buff there the amr 9 for the most part saw nerfs across the board but did see a buff to that sprint to fire time so a little quicker on the draw there the rival 9 hrm 9 and the striker all saw increases to the sprint to fire time so nerfs there the striker 9 saw a buff and a nerf where it did continue that sprint to fire nerf but did increase the max damage range then the wsp swarm and wsp 9 also saw increases the sprint to fire time nerfs there now that said the smgs from modern warfare 2 of the mx9 lockman sub and bass p all ended up getting buffs in some of those again values to the damage ranges max damage and bring those up a little bit more in line with other smg play the lmgs we saw a nerf and a buff to the bruin mark 9 a buff to the tack eradicator increasing that max damage the tack of Valvery is interestingly one that saw nerfs across the board again with increases the sprint to fire and aim down sight times but a decrease to the rate of fire on that 556 belt mag Magazine. The RAP H and HCR 56 saw buffs across the board here to those, but the Rowl MG, for some reason, while you're increasing and buffing all these other MW2 weapons, did see an increase to the sprint to fire time and aim down sight time. So nerfs there, but nothing else. So that's an interesting one for sure, if you ask me. The Tempest Torrent Marksman Rifle from Modern Warfare 2 saw a max damage decrease, and the Sniper Rifles of the XRK Stalker, KV Inhibitor, and SPX-80 all ended up seeing those same Modern Warfare 3 nerfs apply also to Warzone. And then finally, your handguns of the Renetti and the WSP Stinger also saw some minimal buffs there, but buffs overall. Additionally, you saw some adjustments to the Semtex, the Breacher Drone, Claymores, Molotovs, Drill Charge, Thermo Barrack Grenades, Proximity Mines, and C4, where some of those were adjusted mostly buffing a lot of those here which is definitely interesting though the semtex did get a nerf decreasing the radius of damage the outer damage dealt and now eod will prevent the victim from going down if stuck with a semtex grenade so that one in particular might be a little polarizing but those were the changes made to that and then some notable quality of life changes you now have stats actually in game once again you have a clear team pings option which is something that hides teammates and clears yours so your other teammates can still see their pings but for you it clears it entirely which is i think a pretty cool thing we have mosquito drone ui improvements you have the pick five challenges from modern warfare 3 this past season being introduced where you can track it in game absolutely love that and then you have supply uav improvements where not only one will it highlight these boxes now through walls as well but it will only showcase the legendary and personal supply boxes which is something that i think is absolutely nice i don't really care about the normal or resurgence chests those really i think just clutter up the ui whenever you end up seeing that called in so i'm all for that but anyways that is 
season three in a nutshell and all the changes that were made to modern warfare 3 and warzone here with this update so that said that's where we're gonna wrap it up let me know your thoughts down below what do you guys think of this update so far like it dislike it whatever the case drop your thoughts but if you enjoyed the video you found it out on insightful do me a favor and drop a like on it and if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe so miss a single thing getting all things modern warfare 3 warzone and anything fps related we got you covered here on the channel love to have in the community but for now thanks so much for watching my name is espresso i'll see you later take care and peace